In your strength, O Lord, the just one rejoices. How greatly your salvation makes him glad. You have granted him his soul's desire. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today we remember St. Henry II, who died on this date, I believe, in 1024. And together with his wife, St. Kunagunga, a lot of times we hear that name and we think it's made up, but it's not. She was the wife of St. Henry II. But they had a great outreach to the poor. And as emperor, he supported church reform and monastic reform. And he helped the Slavic peoples. Let us ask the Lord for mercy and peace for the times we have sinned. And let us seek his love in our lives as we acknowledge our sinfulness. You came to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And you plead for us at the Father's right hand. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, whose abundant grace prepared St. Henry to be raised by you in a wonderful way from the cares of earthly rule to heavenly realms, grant, we pray, through his intercession, that amid the uncertainties of this world, we may hasten towards you with minds made pure through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. What care I for the number of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of whole burnt rams and fat of fatlings. In the blood of calves, lambs, and goats, I find no pleasure. When you come in to visit me, who asks these things of you? Trample my courts no more. Bring no more worthless offerings. Your incense is loathsome to me. New moon and Sabbath, calling of assemblies, octaves with wickedness, these I cannot bear. Your new moons and festivals I detest. They weigh me down, I tire of the load. When you spread out your hands, I close my eyes to you. Though you pray the more, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wronged. Hear the orphan's plea. Defend the widow. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I show the saving power of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew.
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace, but the sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against his, her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's enemies will be those of his household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever receives a righteous man because he is righteous will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because he is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. When Jesus finished giving these commands to his 12 disciples, he went away from that place to teach and preach in their towns. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, that is a very, very difficult passage to read hearing that Jesus has come not to bring peace, but to set people against each other, not just people against each other, but even within our own households. This is one of those passages that can leave us a little bit baffled and confused. You know, when we think of Jesus, we think of everything being tranquil and peaceful, everybody getting along. We know it doesn't work that way. But Jesus does this all the time, so we, wouldn't be, we shouldn't be surprised. So what does Jesus mean? Does he really want, us, want to bring the sword and division rather than peace? It's important when reading this passage that we read it in the light of everything else Jesus has ever said. We must read it in light of all his teachings on love and mercy, on forgiveness, on unity. But with that said... What was Jesus talking about in this passage? In large part, he was speaking about one of the effects of the truth. The truth of the gospel has the power to deeply unite us to God when we fully accept it as the word of truth. But another effect is that it divides us from those who refuse to unite to God in truth. We're not intending this and we ought not to do so on our own will or our own intention, no. But it must be understood that by immersing ourselves in the truth, in God's truth, the only truth, we're also putting ourselves at odds with everyone else who may be at odds with God and his truth. That's where the division comes. It doesn't come because God wants us to love, no. But when we hold on to the truth of God and we profess it and we try to live it out in our lives, and we come up uh, against or encounter someone who is against all that, it's going to create a division. Our culture today wants to preach what we call relativism. This is an idea that what is good and true for me may not be good and true for anyone else. But in spite of having all different truths, we can still be happy, one, one happy family. That's not the truth. There is only one truth. The truth, with a capital T, is that God has established what is right and what is wrong. He has set his moral law over all humanity, and this cannot be undone. It cannot be changed. Truth does not change. That's why when we hear that gospel passage around uh, Holy Week, when Pontius Pilate says, truth, what is truth? He wanted to preach relativism. Jesus also sets forth the truths of our faith, and those cannot be undone. And that law is as true for me as it is for everyone, of, for everyone else. The passage today offers us a sobering reality that we reach, by rejecting all forms of relativism and by holding on to truth, 
we also run the risk of division, even with those in our families. It's sad and it hurts. That's obvious. We have to acknowledge that. Jesus offers this passage especially to strengthen us when this happens. If division happens as a result of our sin, then shame on us. If it happens as a result of the truth, as offered in mercy, then we should accept it as the result of the gospel. Jesus was rejected, and we should not be surprised if it happens to us as well. Today, let us reflect upon how fully we are ready and willing to accept the full truth of the gospel, no matter what the consequences. The full truth will set us free and will also at times reveal the division present between those we love and those who have rejected God. We must pray for unity in Christ, but not be willing to compromise so as to bring about a false unity. Let us stand. Trusting in God's love for us, trusting in the truth, we place our needs before him and cry out, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, may God the Father grant him the wisdom and spirit and the heart of the Son to unify the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in positions of civil authority, may God's peace reign through them in place of the sword and division. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from unjust treatment or discrimination, may the Lord encourage them and deliver them from their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed from this life, may the mercy and love of God enfold them and bring them to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in a special way, we remember Margaret Sturschick for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you ask great things of us as we strive to follow the way of your cross. Hear the prayers we offer today, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the present oblation, O Lord, which we offer in commemoration of blessed Saint Henry, bestow on your faithful, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, he gave you thanks and praise, he broke the bread, 
He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of eternal salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, we and our Archbishop, and all the clergy and faithful, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your divine will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord.
for those who cannot receive communion at this time, we offer you this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord, in commemoration of blessed Saint Henry, sanctify our minds and hearts that we may merit to be sharers in his divine nature through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.